Welcome to the Way of Mastery. This is Earl Raj Purdy, and I'm so glad to be with my mighty companions. So good to see you. I love you. Don't forget to comment with each other. That's why we're doing this live, so you can interact with me. I see your comments, and you can comment with each other and like it. Be sure to like it and share the video. You can share the live broadcast. Welcome to the Way of Mastery. Come on into the Way of Mastery on Facebook Live. This is Earl Purdy. I can't wait to talk about desire. We're going to be talking about desire. We're going to talk about desire. We're going to talk about desire. We're going to talk about desire. Mm, 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 mm. We're in the way of mastery. Remember, we are here live. So let's take advantage of the vibe of being here live. Mm. We're going to talk about releasing judgment of desire. That's going to be the part of the way of mastery. We're in the way of the heart on page 47 in the way of the heart in the way of mastery. We're in the way of the heart, the section called releasing judgment of desire on page 47, releasing judgment of desire. That's in part one, the way of the heart, lesson four, Lesson four, the way of the heart, releasing judgment 
of desire on page 47. I'm excited to get into this. I want to say, like I say often, is that the Course in Miracles teaches that you teach best what you most need to learn. And, and you can't forget something that you're reminding someone else of. So look at me as an official reminder. And I'm saying this because it also reinforces the truth in me also. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to welcome it. Some of this you may find hard to believe and other things you hear this evening and on this video may be quite startling. This is not about analyzing the ideas or judging the ideas at all. It's using the ideas that's going to show you. It's using the ideas that's going to show you that the ideas are true. Using the ideas are going to show you that the ideas are true. Using the ideas are going to show you that the ideas are true. I want to get a shout, give a shout out to Andrea and Rhonda and Sophia and Diana and Talisha and CJ and Heidi and Laurel and Pamela and Cheryl and Kimmy and Rhonda and Barbie and Myrna and all the rest of you that's online with me right now. Sophia, all of you all of my mighty companions, but we are also going to have this great one-to-one -one relationship with each other. And we're talking about the releasing judgment of desire, releasing judgment of desire. So let me go through this paragraph. Let's, get, let's jump this off. It says, learn then through what? Learn through simple practice. What is it that we're supposed to be learning through simple practice? To interrupt the patterns that you've learned. You're going to practice interrupting the patterns that you've learned from this illusory world. There are patterns that we've learned that we are going to do a simple practice that's going to help us interrupt the patterns that we've learned through our ego. We're going to, we're going to do some simple exercises that will interrupt the patterns that we've learned through being here in this illusory world. And the purpose of us interrupting these patterns that we've learned is to, is to teach us how to stop judging our desires. Stop judging our desires. Stop judging our desires. Stop judging our desires. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to stop. We're going to learn tonight how to stop judging our desires. You and I are going to learn how to stop judging our desires. Earl, you're going to learn tonight how to stop judging your desires. Uh, <clears throat> This will be different for each and every one, depending on where you begin, how you interrupt the patterns you have learned. That's going to be different for everyone. But here's a very simple exercise. I'm going to give you a very simple exercise. Um, when you wake up in the morning, as soon as you stand up, take a pause and ask yourself this question. We can do it right now. Pause. And ask yourself this question, 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 ask yourself this question. What do I want right now? Right now, ask yourself, what do I want right now? What do I want right now? What do I want right now? What do you want right now? What do you want right now? What do you want right now? What ask yourself, what do you want right now? What do I want right now? What do I want right now? What do I want, want right now? What do I want right now? Um, then then uh, the way of mastery says, right away the man will say, well, I'm too busy to know what I want. I have to go off to work. I have to serve everybody else. I'm here to satisfy the world. I have no time to ask myself what I want. But when you get up, uh, either right now, say, what do I want? What do I want right now? What do I want right now? Right now. Right now. What is it that the... Way of Master tells us that we need, we really need to remember. We really need to remember that whatever you decree is, whatever you decree is, whatever you declare, that's what you are going to experience. What you really and truly decide, that's what you're going to experience. What you really truly decide, what you decree is. That means the thought that you hold in the mind will be reflected through the nature of your experience. Whatever I think in my mind is going to be reflected in my experience. Whatever I think in my mind is going to be reflected in my experience. 
Whatever you think in your mind is going to be reflected in your experience. What is it that's going to be reflected in your experience? What you think in your mind. What you think in your mind is going to be reflected in your experience. So take pause and ask yourself right now, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? Sending you out love, CJ. Sending you out love, Susan. Thank you for sending me those hearts. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. So ask yourself, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Then simply give yourself a minute to observe whatever comes up in your mind. Give yourself a minute to observe what's coming up in you. Give yourself a moment, Earl, to observe what's coming up in you when you say, what do you want? Give a moment to get in, give yourself a moment moment to get in touch with what you're feeling inside your body when you say what you want. So what do you want? Take a minute, observe what comes up. Take a minute, pause, pause, and then ask yourself, what is coming up in me right now? And don't I'd like to make a suggestion. Ask for what you really want, <laughs> not what you might be saying you want because you're trying to be spiritual. I mean, if you really, really just want something that you're asking for spiritually, that's beautiful. But if you want a toaster, that's okay too. So don't think that you have to say any particular thing. What you want to do is go, this is what's coming up for me. This is what I want right now. Uh, for an example, heaven forbid that you might say, in other words, sometimes when people are trying to be really, really spiritual, then they they might want sex, but they're not going to say, oh, what do I really want right now? Oh, a fan, fantastic sexual experience. That's what I'd like to happen right now, because if you did that, then for sure, you know, you're not really spiritual. You're not really spiritual if you say what you want more than anything is to get laid. That, that's, that just doesn't sound spiritual. A spiritual being would never say what I really want is sex. Um you might want to take a hot shower. It says you might want a glass of juice of water. You might want to sing. You might want to stretch. You might want to breathe. You might want to turn and look at your lover, your mate still sleeping in the bed. You might want to arise. You might want to sneak into your children's room and watch them sleep. You might want to sit down and read the morning paper. You, Whatever it is, what is it that you would like to do right now? So what is the point? What is the point? Well, I'm going to tell you what the point is. The point here is to notice that by asking the question, something will respond in you. Just by asking the question, something inside of you is going to respond. Just by asking what question? What do I want right now? If you ask yourself, what do you want right now? That question will generate an energy that will want to respond inside of you and so when you start to feel your response, what do you think you should do? When you start to feel the response to your question, what do you think you should do? Notice that there's a feeling that's associated with it. Notice that when you're asking for what you really desire, it's, it's something inside your body, something inside your cells just, just, just start to sing a little bit. Well, that desire, that part of you that gets turned on by what you are asking for, that's the energy that's the elixir of life. What, what is the elixir of life? The elixir of life is called desire. Desire is the elixir of life. The elixir of life is desire. Mm. Mm. What turns me on? What turns me on? What turns me on? What is it I want? What is it that I want to do right now that inspires me? What is it that I want to do right now that really turns me on? What is it that I want to do right now? It could be the simplest thing. What do I want to do right now? That will be moving in me through the energy of desire. So in this one minute, you need not rise to act. Right now, what I want you to do is simply observe. What do I want? For instance, to take a shower. The feeling, the thought, or the thought that emits the feeling in the body. Get in touch with the thought that emits feelings. You want to have thoughts that make you feel something. You want to have thoughts that, 
that 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 allow you to become a hundred percent present in your physical body. You want to have thoughts that elicit desire and feeling. That's the elixir of desire. So desire is desire is something coming from a death of your being that rests right next to the face of God. Desire comes from the very depth of your being, from your very soul, from the very center of who you are. So by following what? By following the desire that wells up, wells up where? Through your heart, by feeling your desire, by embracing your desire, what is it that you might learn? You might learn and discover what the ocean is wishing to express through the wave of who you are. If you judge desire, what will happen if you start judging your desires? Oh, I have this desire, but it's not spiritual enough. I have this desire and it's not, uh, it's, it's something that's bad about this desire. It's something that's not cool about this desire. If you judge your desire, do you know that you might be cutting off the creative flow? When you judge your desire, you might be cutting off the creative flow that allows you to experience that desire. You might be shutting off the creative flow that the mind of God wishes to express. Do you really want to block off the creative flow that God wants to express through you? Do you do you do you do you want to cut off the creative flow of what God wants to express through you? Well, how do you shut off that creative flow of God? How do you keep that creative flow of God from expressing itself and manifesting the core desires of your heart? You do it by judging your desires. Stop 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 judging. Stop judging your desires. Stop judging. Stop judging your desires. And of course, that's the problem. That's the problem. You have tied the hose of your total fulfillment in a knot through your conflicted judgments. So here's a very common judgment in your world. Would you like to hear a very common judgment? I'll tell you what. Um, be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Be, un beep, 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 beep. be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself about what, Earl? Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. How many times have you felt the desire to be rich? How many times have you desired to be rich? How many times have you desired to be wealthy? How many times have you desired to be wealthy? Whether that's saying that you're wealthy because you know all of God's abundance or your desire to be wealthy because you got 10 or 15 million dollars in the bank or 50 or 100 million. How many times have you desired to be wealthy? However you define wealthy. Isn't it something... It's, it's not really something you're supposed to sit around and talk about. It's not really something you're really supposed to make public, especially if you're trying to be spiritual. If you're trying to be spiritual, your ego says you, wouldn't you would not say, I want to live in a mansion and I want to have a Rolls Royce and I want to have a yacht and I want to be financially wealthy and rich. I want to have so much money that I don't know what to do. I want to have the fanciest, the best house, clothes, cars, furniture. I want to be rich. I want to be able to get on a jet plane and go anywhere. As a matter of fact, I want to own my own jet plane. I want lots and lots and lots of money. It's not one of the things that people tend to talk about if they're trying to be spiritual. There's a big association with... Uh, being spiritual means that you don't ever focus on material wealth. That's, it's, that's a very popular judgment. That's what, that's what Yeshua was trying to tell us right now, that, that you, do, you may have a judgment. You may have a judgment, and you may have a very popular judgment, 
And that popular judgment is you certainly wouldn't sit around and tell everybody, stand up in the middle of a spiritual class and say, you know, I want three or four million dollars. That's what I'd like. I'd like to have three or four million dollars. I'd like to have a lot of jewelry. And I'd like to ha I would like to have all the good things that money can buy. Uh, that's not usually what people who consider themselves as being spiritual feel comfortable saying or either feel comfortable talking about. Uh, you may have thought, I woke up this morning and I just imagined having so much money that I could buy the entire planet. Then you remember, oh my God, money. Money is the root of all evil. I shouldn't have said I wanted enough money to buy this entire planet because money is the root of all evil. I can't think that way. I shouldn't think that way. Okay, so I just will better get busy and get off to my office job. An office job that I inwardly, secretly resent because I don't think they're paying me what my soul is worth. But I can't get up in the morning and say, oh my God, I think I'd like to have three or four million dollars a week, a year, because that wouldn't be spiritual. I can't think this way. So let me get busy and put on my clothes and go do a job that I absolutely don't enjoy that I don't enjoy, that I don't enjoy, and that I don't feel like I'm making the amount of money that I deserve to make. But I'll pretend like I'm quite fine. Uh, oh, money, no, 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 I'm quite fine. I, 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 I really have enough money. No, 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 I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Then as you drive home and a Mercedes Benz pulls up beside you, you can't help but turn and say, if you would be honest with yourself, you may not be able to. Now, this only applies to who it applies to. If it doesn't apply to you, fine, okay? But though, there are some of you out now, right now that are resonating totally to what I'm saying. So as you drive home from the job you don't like, that you have some resentment about, uh, somebody in a Mercedes Benz pulls up beside you, and if you were being honest with yourself, in that moment, you may say, God, I wish I could afford one of those. Oh, God, I think I'd like to have a luxury car like that. Then you think, oh, God, I, I, oh, my goodness, I can't have that thought. I can't have that thought that um, I'd like to have a Lexus. Uh, I can't have that thought that I, I'd like to have a Rolls Royce. Oh, God, I can't have that thought. So I think I'll just drive my old Volkswagen down the road because I'm being a very spiritual person. If for any reason the broadcast gets interrupted, just hang in there and wait, and it usually reconnects. Okay, so just hang in there if that happens. Uh, I'll say that one more time. Okay. Okay, I get up in the morning, and I, if I'm honest with myself, I tell myself that I'd like to have a lot more money than I have. But then I turn around and say, oh, if, if I'm trying to be spiritual, I can't think thoughts like that. So I get up, and then I put on my clothes to go to a job that's not fulfilling and that I don't really make the amount of money that I'd like to make. And I think that's because I'm being spiritual. Then I leave work and I have a lot of resentment because I don't feel like I'm being paid what I worth. When I work, then somebody pulls up next to me in a luxury car. And then again, I tell myself, oh my God, I sure would like to have a car like that. Then I stop myself and judge the desire again and say, oh, I can't have a thought like that. I should feel okay about the car that I'm driving, even if it's a car that I really don't feel that good about driving. That's not being spiritual. That's judging your desires. That's judging your desires. So what should you do? You should be honest with yourself. You should be honest with yourself. How many times have you felt well enough inside you that you'd like to be wealthy? And when I say wealthy, I'm talking about materially wealthy. I'm not just talking about the wealth of God, which is our divine right. I'm talking about at the level of the body, in the world that we think we're in. Uh, how many times have you felt that you would really like to be wealthy? And what on earth has caused you to feel that desire? What is it that's causing you to be afraid to ask for money? What is, it that's, what is it that's causing you to be afraid to ask for your material desires? What's caused you to be tied, like, tied up like a, uh, tied up, to have yourself just tied up and blocked in terms of being willing to just ask for what you desire? So, and then, and then you're judging your desire. Don't you know that that's blocking that desire from coming into manifestation? Judging your desires block them from coming into manifestation? Judging your desires, Earl, judging your desires, judging your desires, mighty companion, judging your desires, uh, seeing your desire is bad, telling yourself it's not spiritual, that's blocking the creative flow. Don't let your spiritual awareness block the very things that you think that you really desire because you're still tied up 
and that old programming from the world that associates spirituality with not allowing yourself to have any kind of material wealth. Uh, perhaps when you were a child and you went to one of your churches, uh, there was somebody in a long robe standing upon a platform because everything looked so beautiful. You thought that surely that person must be talking and speaking with authority. And since this church was filled with a whole lot of little minds that were all living in their own level of fear, all of these people who were in fear in the church heard that uh, money is the root of all evil. There were a lot of people that heard from their ministers that money is the root of all evil. And you thought because you were young and you were very receptive, you heard, oh, well, money is the root of all evil. Oh, well, that's the truth. Oh, yes, that's the truth. So I better fear money because money is the root of all evil. So I must fear money. I must block money. So how do you know if you even still have that limited belief about money? If you do have that limited belief about money, that money is the root of all evil, then right now you are probably feeling uncomfortable. First of all, this conversation is making you feel uncomfortable. The second of all, uh, if you have the wrong perception of this, then you're going to go overboard to assure yourself that money isn't a, wealth isn't about money. So that's, that's another popular way that people avoid looking at their fears and their negative beliefs around money and material things is they, 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 they well, of, well, you know, my, abundance is more than money. Abundance is more than money. Of course, abundance is more than money, but what's wrong with abundance coming to you in the form of money? You walk into a store, you feel great when you look and you see all the abundance of produce of, around you, and you don't judge any of that, you know. But if you go, okay, I'd like to have material abundance, then those judgments all of a sudden come up and you feel like it's not okay to ask for it. So what am I trying to say to you? I'm trying to say to you that you have one authority. You have one authority. And that authority is never held within the office of any church, that authority is not any in any organization. This one authority is not any one individual. Would you like to know what your one authority is? What is your real authority? Wouldn't you like me to tell you that? What your real authority is, is the voice for God. God's voice is your real authority. The creator's voice is your real authority. When I'm talking about God, I'm not talking about the traditional idea of God as a dysfunctional man in the sky who is a super being that's full of jealousy and fear and condemnation broken in two by periods in which it just loves you. I'm not talking about that concept of God. I'm talking about the God, the creator, the creative force, the infinite intelligence that lives within your heart and lives within your mind, God isn't limited. God isn't limited. You are not limited. Your creator is not limited. So therefore, your creator doesn't require that you be limited. That which created you is wealthy and abundant. So that which created you is not requiring that you be poor and in lack. So this, your creator does not require that you be poor. Your creator is not requiring that you be anything less than abundant on every level. Your creator is not requiring that you be limited in any way. Your creator is not requiring that you limit yourself in any way because your creator is not limited. I love these comments that you're making. I see these comments that you're making. And I'm so glad to see these comments. So, would you like to receive all that God would give to you? Would you like to receive everything that the Creator would give you? Would you like to receive everything that your Creator wants to give you? Would you like to receive everything that the universe, the universe, would you like to receive everything that the universe wants to give you? Would you, would, you, would you like to receive everything that the universe wants to give you? So what do you need to do to receive all the things that God wants to give you? You have to make a decision. What? Yes, Earl. If you want to receive everything that I want to give to you, 
then you've got to make a decision. It's like, it's, like, it's like God is talking to me right now. Okay, and talking to you right now. If you want to receive everything that I want to give you, you've got to make one decision. What is that decision? You must make the decision to rise up. You must, you, must, you must make the decision to be the greatest wave, the greatest being, the greatest conduit that you could ever be. Right now, you've got to make the decision that you're going to be the greatest expression of yourself that you could ever be. Right now, you've got to decide, decide, brother man, decide, mighty companion, that you are going to be the best you that you could ever be. You're going to be the best you that you could ever be. You're going to be the most powerful wave in the ocean. Because that's the only way that you honor God. You only honor your creator and you only honor yourself and you only honor those around you if you allow yourself to be the greatest, the most spectacular self that you could ever allow yourself to be. And your creator doesn't limit itself. And so your creator is not limiting you. Your creator doesn't limit itself. So your creator, your creator, your creator is not limiting itself and your creator is not limiting you listen to me listen to me god is not limited you are not limited 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 you are not limited you are not limited you are not limited. You are not limited. God is not limited. God is not limited. You are not limited. We are not. You are not limited. God is not limited. You are not limited. God is not limited. You are not limited. in a different way. Reverend Yolanda, Reverend Yolanda, another good friend of mine, just like the other person that I share their fabulous music, my brother John Christmas at johnchristmas.com. This is Reverend Yolanda, Y-O-L-A-N-D-A -A at ReverendYolanda.net. Oh, if you want to get that pulsating music that's done by another part of you. So let's go further. Let's go further, shall we? <laughs> you could say that God is like a wise gardener who is constantly trying to grow beautiful roses. She knows exactly how much moisture to put in the soil. God, she knows how to make those nutrients rise through the soil and from the soil, through the roots, up through the heart, 
of the stem of the flower to give forth radiant color so that everyone that looks on the flower is touched by the mystery of beauty. And then, according to the way of mastery, God wonders. Wonders what? Well, it's interesting. These roses that I have created seem to have a mind of their own. As the elixir I tried to give them rises through the stems, these roses tie themselves in little knots and only a little bit of the elixir reaches out so that the petals are never quite blossom fully. Have you ever, have you ever had the feeling, have you ever had that feeling that you are putting more energy into staying constricted than you are in allowing expansion? Are you, are you putting more energy in holding yourself back than the energy that you're putting into expanding outward? Are you putting most of your energy into fear as opposed to putting your energy into love? Mm. Actually, I'm not a Pisces. I am a Sagittarius, but I have a Pisces moon. And so Pisces is a big part of my personality. Those astrology buffs out there, I just want you to know, I'm a Sag. Okay, an Aquarius rising. So I'm out there. I am out there. Okay. So what is it that links you to God's will? What is it that links you to God's will? What is it that links you to God's will? Well, what links you to God's will is your desire, your desire, your desire, your desire, your desire is what links you to the will of love. It's your desire that links you to the will of God. What is creation? Creation is desire. There's a line in the Course in Miracles where it says, to holy desire is to create. To holy desire is to create. If you totally desire something, you create it. That's how things are created. Not halfway desires, not guilty desires, not judging desires, total desire without judgment, total desire without judgment. So what's of extreme importance? What is it that's of supreme importance? The thing that's of supreme importance is what you desire. <clears throat> what is it that you desire? So if you take the little exercise that we've given you and begin to put that little exercise into practice when you wake up in the morning and you do it in a very simple, quiet way, what's going to happen? You will begin to get back in touch with the innocence and the beauty of the movement of desire. If you would do what I just told you to do, first thing in the morning, ask yourself, what do you want? And then you don't judge what you want. Then you will get back in touch with the innocence and beauty of the movement of desire. And then you can start delighting in desire. Then you can start delighting in the desire. So when you have a sexual thought, 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 what should you do? What should you do? What should you do? Watch what should you do? When you have a sexual thought, when you have a sexual thought, do any of you ever have sexual thoughts? Uh, do any of you ever have sexual thoughts? I, I know you all spiritual and everything, but do you ever have sexual thoughts? Do you ever have sexual desires? Well, this is what you do if you have a sexual desire. What you do if you have a sexual desire is you just be with it. Just be with it. Just be with it. If you ever have a sexual desire, just be with it. Why don't you notice what, uh, what, why don't you notice what a sexual desire causes to happen inside your body? Why don't you pay attention to what your sexual desire is making you feel? Why don't you pay attention to what your sexual thought, uh, what kind of experience that that's causing in your body. So when you have a sexual thought, does your body, when you have a sexual thought, does your breathing change? When you're, when you're sexually turned on, does your breathing change? Uh, when you're sexually turned on, does your heart beat faster? When you're sexually turned on, be honest with yourself. Isn't isn't this putting a little smile on your face if it's not scaring you to death? Be honest with yourself. Is it not putting a smile on your face? What if you decided to honestly embrace that effect? What, what if you honestly embrace the effect of having a sexual thought or feeling as being totally innocent and totally beautiful? All right, here we go. My sexual thoughts and feelings are totally innocent and totally beautiful. My sexual thoughts and feelings are 
are totally innocent and totally beautiful. My sexual thoughts and feelings are totally innocent and totally beautiful. My sexual thoughts and feelings are totally innocent and totally beautiful. My sexual thoughts, my sexual feelings are totally innocent and totally beautiful. My sexual thoughts and feelings are totally innocent. I want you to pay attention to how you're feeling as I say this. I want you to, I want to ask you to pay close attention to whether or not you're judging me right now or judging what you're hearing right now uh, or whether or not it's causing sensations within you that put a, fi uh, put a smile on your face. Be honest with yourself right now. Now, um, why don't you honestly embrace your sexual thoughts and feelings as perfectly innocent and perfectly beautiful? So I'm going to say it again. Your sexual thoughts and feelings, Earl, are perfectly innocent and perfectly beautiful. Your sexual thoughts and feelings, Raj, are perfectly innocent and perfectly beautiful. Your sexual thoughts and feelings are perfectly innocent and perfectly beautiful. How might your day change if you don't repress the awareness of your sexual desire? How might how might how might your day change if you don't judge your sexual feelings and desire? What how might your day change if you don't judge your sexual feelings and desires? You will notice we're not saying that you should walk down the street and grab everybody that walks by you. I'm not telling you that you should violate anyone in any kind of way because of your desire. We're talking about allowing yourself. We're talking about allowing yourself what? We're talking about allowing yourself the living embrace of exactly whatever energy is moving through your being. It's time for you to embrace every feeling that's moving through your being, including your sexual feelings. We're talking. We're not talking about you grabbing nobody. We're not talking about you violating or attacking anybody. We're talking about allowing yourself the living embrace of exactly what energy is moving through your being. Embrace the energy just move that's moving through your being. Why is it important? Why is it important for you to embrace the feelings that are flowing through your being? If you have decided that there are certain energies, if you've decided that there are certain energies that are demonic, if you've decided that there are certain energies that are demonic or have the power to distract you from your union with God, you have already decided there is something beyond the reach of your power. Believing that there is something beyond your power is what disempowers you. There is no negative, evil, demonic thought that can have control over you. There is no negative, demonic, evil thought that can truly have control over you. All that means is you're taking an innocent energy and you're turning that energy into a monster that must be feared at all costs. So I'm going to say something to you right now. I want you to listen, Earl. I want you to listen, my mighty companion. I'm going to say something to you right now. The mystical transformation that carries you from feeling yourself to be a disempowered little drop of foam on the edge of a wave to the sense of freedom and empowered living that flows from the mind of God through you to express only beautiful creations filled with majesty and power and miracles is willingness. The mystical transformation that carries you and fills you with majesty and power and miracles is willingness. I am asking you to have willingness. Willingness brings about a mystical transformation. Don't trust your good intentions. Of course, the miracle says, trust not your good intentions because they're not enough. Don't trust your good intentions. Your good intentions are not enough. Do not trust your good intentions. Your good intentions are not enough. Trust instead your willingness. Trust your willingness to move in the direction of pure, innocent, beautiful desire. Trust your willingness. Miracles come from a little bit of willingness. The willingness to turn to the very energies. What kind of willingness? The willingness to turn to the very energies that move through your mind. Your willingness to turn to the very energies that move through your body, but without being afraid of them. Be willing to embrace the energies that move through your body without being afraid of them. Be willing to embrace the feelings that move through your body. Be willing to embrace the very energies that move through your body without fearing them. Be willing to embrace the energies that are moving through your body without being afraid of them. 
What is it that you should do? Have a willingness to turn to the very energies that are moving through your mind and moving through your body. Embrace the energies that's moving through your mind and moving through your body and embrace them. And don't be afraid of them. Just look at the energies that are moving through your body. Look at the energies that are moving through your mind with innocence. Look at the feelings that are, look, look at the energies that are moving through your mind with innocence. Look at the energies that are moving through your mind. Look at these energies with innocence. And not only look at these energies with innocence, what is it telling us? Look at these energies with wonder. With wonder. Look at these energies with wonder. Look at these willing, look at these energies with innocence. Embrace the energies that are moving through your mind and body. Embrace the energies that are moving through your mind and your body. Embrace the energies that are moving through your mind and body. And how do you embrace the, en the energies that are moving through your mind and body? You embrace the energies that are moving through your mind and body with innocence and wonder. This is the source of the myths that have been told in all cultures. The, the myth of the knight that slays the dragon or kissing the wild beast on the cheek and then the wild beast becomes a loving companion. Your monsters, what are your monsters? What are your monsters? Your monsters are what you fear. Your monsters are what you fear. Your monsters are what you repress because of the judgments that you've learned from the world. You are creating your own monsters because your monsters are what it is you fear and your monsters are whatever it is you're repressing that you've learned from the world. And the world, what is the world? What is the world? The world is only the denial of, of the kingdom. The world is the exact opposite of the truth. What the world teaches is the exact opposite of the truth. The world teaches you, you that you are a body. The truth is that you are not a body. You are spirit. You have a body. The world teaches you that you are a victim of the situations and circumstances that are happening to you that you have absolutely no control over at all. And the truth teaches you that you're the creator of your experience by the perceptions and interpretations that you are using, that what you are seeing is coming from your own consciousness and your own mind. The world says that you are guilty and, and sinful in a lot of areas. The truth says you are totally innocent and you are totally beautiful. The truth is the opposite. The truth is the opposite of what the fearful world teaches. So if you're sitting in one of your churches and everybody is saying sexuality is very bad, if, if you're sitting in a church or any gathering and they're telling you that sexuality will keep you from God, that being a sexual being is going to keep you from your spiritual growth, that being a sexual being is going to keep you from love, that being a sexual being and sexuality is bad, right away, if you hear anything like that, you should tell yourself, I'm listening to a person that fears sexuality. I'm listening to a person, the person that is telling you that money is bad, that material wealth is bad. That's a person that fears material wealth. That's a person that fears money because all of it's actually divine. Everything is divine because everything is made up of God. Everything is made up of love. Everything is divine. So what should you allow yourself? Allow yourself to think, perhaps I would do well to embrace it. Perhaps it would be in my best interest to embrace the idea of wealth and abundance on every level. Maybe it would be in, uh, to my advantage to love it. Maybe it would be to my advantage to master it. And that means maybe it will be to my advantage not to be afraid of it, whatever it is that my energy wants to embrace that's peaceful and loving that I've been told is bad. So be with what I'm saying. Be with what I'm saying. Be with what I'm saying. Imagine, imagine someone is telling you that money is the root of all evil. Imagine that someone's telling you that money is the root of all evil. <sighs> and then they put out their hand as soon as they tell you that money is the root of all evil, they turn around and put their hand out and say, would you please make a donation to our organization? Money is the root of all evil. But would you please uh, give me some money or, uh, or, or, or make a, a donation to our organization? Wouldn't that be 
wouldn't that be an expression of conflict to turn around and to, on one hand say money is the root of all evil and then constantly want money that you think is going to support whatever it is you're doing in the world. Money is evil, but I need some money for my rent. Money is evil, but I need some money for shelter. Money is evil, but I need money for clothes. Money is evil, but I need money for food. Ultimately, all things come from God. Everything that we experience ultimately comes from God. But it has to come through channels in this world, in this dream. And one of those channels is money. Or one of those channels is you being able to embrace your sens sensuality and sexuality and innocence and wonder. So um, that's the kind of conflict that permeates the religions. That's the kind of conflict that permeates the dogma of this world. This world says, don't desire money. Don't desire wealth. By the way, to keep this ministry on this radio station, you really need to send a donation. So what is the person trying to teach you? What is the person in denial of? Sex, sex, and money. Sex and money. Sex and money. These are pretty basic things, aren't they? Sex and money. These are pretty basic things, are they not? They represent the energies that flow from the mind of God. Sex and money represent the energies that flow from the mind of God. And the mind of God would express itself in unlimited joy. The mind of God would express itself in unlimited power. And the mind of God would not be willing to settle for any kind of limitation. The mind of God would not be willing to settle for any limitation. The mind of God would not be willing to settle for any limitation. The mind of God would not be willing to settle for any limitation. The mind of God would not be willing to settle for limitation of any kind. The man of God would not be willing to set us for, to settle for a limitation of any kind. <sighs> Take a breath. Let yourself receive what we just heard. Let yourself let that in. Don't judge your desire. I'm going to do a quick recap in just a minute. And I'm looking at all the comments that are absolutely awesome. And, and it's just funny because I'm going to say what we just heard that if you would like to make a financial expression of appreciation to my teaching ministry that I do full time, then I totally and completely would love you to do that, would appreciate that because I am not telling you that money is evil. I'm not telling you that money is bad. It's just another means for the universe and spirit to bring joy and wonder and beauty in our experience. And so if you would like to do that, which I would truly appreciate, go to earlpurdy.com, earlpurdy.com. The next thing is work with me, have a one-on-one -on -one session with me called a clarity session where I use all of these teachings and the teachings of the Course in Miracles and 37 years of working with people and my knowledge of astrology and numerology also, which can be helpful, looked at correctly, and I bring that all into the session to help you achieve that which you really desire in your heart and in your soul. So go to my website, earlpurdy.com. And I'm going to be doing a series of online workshops soon. So go to my website, earlpurdy.com. Sign up for my mailing list, my contact list, so that you can be sure that you're made aware because I'm going to go a heck of a lot deeper and a lot more uncensored. So I want to know those people who want to go deeper with me into their happiness and removing the blocks. So go to my website. And the music was Reverend Yolanda, Y-O-L-A-N-D dot net. And you can get that music. And the other music that I played in my class that everybody loves is by John Christmas at johnchristmas.com. These beings are putting out the loving messages and energy that God is bringing through them. And so you are a blessing. The comments, I was, it's like me sharing and seeing the things that you are sharing is a powerful experience. So let's go back. Remember, the thing you want to do is ask yourself, what do I want? What do I want? What For what do 
what you want. When you get up in the morning, you want to ask for what you want. When you get up in the morning, ask what do you want. When you put your feet on the ground, say, what do I want? And then remember that whatever you want, don't judge whatever you want. Don't judge whatever you want. Don't judge whatever you want. Because if you judge what you want, you block off the creative flow. Don't block, don't block your creative flow. Do not block your creative flow. If you judge what you want, you block your creative flow. Don't judge your desire. You want to embrace your desire. You want to embrace your desire. Sex is innocent. Money is innocent. What you want to experience, it is innocent. We are not talking about taking or attacking. We are not talking about violating. We're talking about loving, appreciating, and seeing and embracing your desires as innocent and wonderful. Your desires are 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 innocent and wonderful. Don't forget, your desires must be embraced. Your desires must be loved. Don't believe that there is anything wrong with allowing yourself to have abundance. There is nothing wrong with allowing yourself to feel all of your desires. Mighty Companions, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, I will be doing A Course of Love right here on Facebook Live. And 1 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time, I will be doing A Course in Miracles every Sunday. I love you. I'm so happy to see those of you online as well as those of you who are commenting and sharing. So share this video, share this video, listen to it over and over again because it's about how to remove all your blocks to allowing yourself to receive the abundance and prosperity and truth of God. Mighty companions, I love you. May the course be with you. Mwah.